Hello everyone, my name is Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy. We're here at Solar Decathlon 2017. Uh, we're touring all these amazing houses in the Solar Village. This competition challenges student teams from around the world to design and build solar powered houses. Uh, right now we are in front of our house by UC Davis uh, and there's a lot of cool features in this house. Uh, they're very focused on water as you can see by their logo. We're gonna head up the ramp and meet some of the teammates and see what's going on inside this incredible solar powered and water efficient house. So we're here in Denver, Colorado for Solar Decathlon 2017. Um, it's a great event. It's open all weekend, free to the public. So if you're in the Denver area, gotta come check it out. Um, but let's meet some of the teammates here. Hi, folks. Hey, Hi, how's it going? What's your name? I'm good. My name's Brooke Carey. Uh, and what's your role on the team? I'm a student project manager. Awesome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about our house? Uh, okay, so our house is in response to the California drought. So in California, we've been experiencing a lot of droughts as well as a lot of wildfires. So um, one thing we're really proud of is our exterior features. They're, um, all this wood is made from drought wood, which are, which are trees that have been killed in the recent California drought. So on the outside, you'll see a lot of cedar, and on the inside, you'll see a lot of beetle-killed pine. So uh, we want our house to be drought-resilient, educational, and inclusive. So one of our big features here is our exterior water feature. So this rises and falls based on how well the owner has met their water goal for the day, and they can change their goal on our smart mirror. So we kind of took uh, drought resiliency as like a two-edged sword, I guess. So we have really efficient water technology and then we want to have really efficient users. So we're trying to attack user behavior in very like um, passive kind of ways where they can choose to accept this behavior change or they can choose not to. So it's not intrusive, it still feels like a home. Right, so the house is helping you save water, but it's also challenging you, right? Yes, it's challenging in a very friendly manner, and it's also challenging your neighbors and showing like, hey, we're saving water, you should save water too. Okay, so in a neighborhood with a bunch of houses like this, you know, you could walk around and mm -hmm. see the uh, feature yeah. there. Yeah, you could be like, oh, mine's like two-thirds of the way up, like, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, a little you know. friendly competition. Yeah, friendly competition. Awesome. Um, and so where did the, uh, you said the wood is, is uh, drought wood, so mm -hmm. um, how was that collected? Where did that come from? So a company called Forest Innovations takes all the trees and they're, when they fell after the drought, they're now like dry, dead trees that are a very big fire hazard. So their company decided to take all those trees and then mill them down and sell them as dimension lumber. So they gave it to us. Great, cool. So um, anything else you want to uh, look at out here? I see this amazing uh, oh. bike, which is cool, but... Uh, oh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is a, so our wall system is made out of bamboo and so we're the number two bike capital in the world, so we like to show off our, bike, our bikes and our bike features. So we found this company in Denver, and their bikes are actually made out of bamboo as well. Very cool. Very light. So. All right. We're still early on the tour, but Philip Andrew says, show us cool stuff. No pressure. Okay, show us cool stuff is the request <laughs> from the chat. So, yeah, anybody who's watching <clears throat> on the stream, thank you very much for joining us here at Solar Decathlon 2017. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we're touring the, well, we're touring our house, which is your house, uh, mm -hmm. from UC Davis, University of California, Davis. Um, so what's, uh, what's this over here? So this is our wall cutaway. Uh, basically, we have a SIPS roof and a SIPS floor, or a structurally insulated panel. So when you, when you get these, they come with the insulation already in them. And then what we have for the wall system is, it's similar to a SIP, but it's from a company called Bamcor, and it's made from bamboo. So you'll see on the inside here, it's all bamboo, but then on the outside, you have an eighth inch of Douglas fir. So with this, we get no studs, basically, and in a typical home, you'll have the high, a much higher framing factor, but with uh, BAMCOR, you have a framing factor of about 2.5, so it's very low, and you get a lot of insulation, and that's how we get our building envelopes so tight. And um, with this wall system, you don't need any uh, drywall either. You can just tape and uh, paint right on it. So uh, with such a tight building envelope, we also have just our radiant uh, system here, so it's the floor system is from a company called Warmboard, and they have an aluminum face at the top. So it's a low mass system. You don't need to embed it in concrete, so that makes it much more responsive because you don't have to heat up a bunch of concrete before you heat your house. So this system has just the Warmboard panel where you run your hot and cold water through that tube, and then it heats up or cools up through the floor. 
And that's pretty, it happens pretty fast. Very fast, yeah. We've already tested it, and actually with such a tight building envelope, we don't even have to run it that much. All right, terrific. Um, shall we head inside? Great, yeah. Orlando DSA is very happy you guys are showing us the new housing options. Okay. Oh, cool. Thank you, Orlando. <laughs> All right, so now we're inside our house from UC Davis. Yeah, so I did mention that we wanted our house to be inclusive. So first of all, we're fully ADA accessible. That's not just the tour route for the competition, but it's the entire house. Uh, additionally, inclusive to us means reconfigurable. So we want a wide range of people to live here, basically, uh, no matter what, how they like to live. So we have uh, student-built furniture. This is all the same kind of drought wood, beetle-killed pine. So these tables flip up or flip down, and you can even take the whole table off if you don't want it. Um, additionally, we have a 935 square foot home, so storage can be a bit of an issue. So we made these uh, ottomans here. We have 12 of them, and they're all student built, and they're all made from the same drought wood, the beetle killed pine. So every one of these ottomans has a cushion and a table, so you can flip it, and you have your storage on the inside there. So. In this way, we are reconfigurable, and we do have a lot of storage options. Uh, additionally, we have this table here that was also student-built. You might notice it has three legs and a track under it. So when you pull on this leaf, you can add three more leaves on top of it, and you can even roll the entire table out. So you can see, you can have your normal breakfast bar, you can seat up to 10. So you can rearrange this whole space. You can rearrange the whole space, yeah. And if you don't want your TV, to, we didn't want our TV to dominate our living room, so. We also have this hidden soffit up here, and our projector screen drops down. So if you have young kids, or if you don't like having your TV in the middle of your room, you can just hide it up in the soffit. All right, very cool. Okay, so see the, the kitchen has uh, some pretty cool stuff. Um, so what do we have going on in here? So I mentioned we want our house to be drought resilient, which means water efficient technologies, but also water efficient users. So. We have here our student developed device, and it thinks that the sink is on right now. So when you turn the sink on, this device will turn on. And right there in the middle, we, we say that that represents one gallon of water. So the water is on right now, and it's starting to drain that gallon. And as you drain that one gallon, you'll count one more tick in that perimeter there. And that perimeter will stay for 24 hours. So you get to see how much water you use at this sink in 24 hours. And every time you turn on the sink, it reminds you that you are using water, and water is very important. And, and water is important in this competition as well, right? Yes. So, I mean, so that's a new category, I believe, this year. So what does uh, that entail? Yeah, so uh, originally there was only four um, juried contests, which means uh, people come through and they decide how well you did mm -hmm. as opposed to measured. This year there's six, so they added innovation in water. And with water, they really, it's basically how well does your water manage or how well does your house manage water? So like we have a gray water reuse system, we capture rainwater and all that stuff for our exterior uh, landscape. Okay. But for us, we wanted to take it a step further because it matters a lot to us in California. So we wanted to have our water efficient house to meet the standards of the contest and everything like that be competitive. But we also wanted our users to be very water efficient. Sure, sounds great. You um, follow through on your promise to Philip. Uh, he really likes the furniture. Oh, great, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, cool. So uh, shall we move on now? Yeah. So, um, so we modeled the house as a, at the competition, we modeled the house as a single family home with two kids. But we also did some analysis on uh, four student renters or a couple without kids. Uh, so right now, this is the kids room. And you'll see up there, we call it like the window into our wall system. So we, we just framed it, but that's basically a hole in our uh, paint there. And you can see the actual bamboo striations there from the BAM core wall system. That's very cool. That's uh, some innovative uh, art you've got. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if uh, our viewers at home will consider that if uh, they, they end up with a hole in their wall next time. Yeah, definitely. Just frame it. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving on to the bathroom, which I'm sure is another uh, very water-centric uh, part of the home. It is, definitely. So again, we're ADA accessible, so we have a full roll-in shower. And we additionally have one of the meters that we had in the kitchen on our bathroom sink. So in both the bathroom and kitchen sink, you can see how much water you're using. And we have a, a shower head there that changes uh, the LEDs on it change color based on how long you've been in the shower. So that's from a company called Hydrel. And if you don't like the colors it changes or you don't like how fast or slow it changes, you can change it on your smartphone app. 
Gotcha. So it's that visual reminder of your water usage and you know keeping people you know thinking with the water in their the forefront of their minds, right? Definitely, yeah. Um, and on on this one, we think like right away, like if this feature lights up, it's not lit up right now, but when it lights up, and let's say you're just brushing your teeth or something, if the gallon is draining, you might think, okay, maybe I'll turn it off while I'm brushing my teeth. Just small amounts of water here and there right. can really add up. Right. And we also have this smart mirror here where the user can change their goal from that uh, exterior feature that you saw out there. Okay. And it so also shows uh, all the water and energy used for the house and a lot of other things. That's very cool. So there's a screen kind of mounted in there. Yeah, it's a screen mounted on two-way acrylic. So basically when the light's off, it's a mirror, and when the light's on, you can see through it. Terrific. So Mike, you can you can wave h hello there as you go by <laughs> in the mirror. Um, so for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we're here at Solar Decathlon 2017 uh, in Denver, Colorado. We're touring one of uh, 11 incredible solar-powered houses that have uh, really are just packed with innovations uh, for energy efficient use, water consumption. Um, it's really amazing. So uh, if you Come down to Denver uh, near the airport. It's the RTD station at 61st and Pena. You can come tour it for free. Um, but we're going to be taking you inside all of the houses here uh, if you're not available to come to this area. So uh, we're in the UC Davis Our House um, getting a tour. And so let's move on to the bedroom. Yeah. So again, we modeled it as a single family home. So this would be the parents' room. And um, we did model it as other, you know, student renters, things like that. So it did come in at 271,000. So that was that's really great. Our goal was 250, and 270 was pretty good. So we were hoping to be very cost effective. That's part of us trying to be inclusive. Uh, and in this window, it's it's kind of tough to see right now, but the the tint there is uh, due to a company called uh, Raven Window. So it's a solar intuitive thermochromatic glazing, and when the sun hits it, it begins to tint over much like the transition sunglass lenses. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's just without having to do anything, it's going to shade you properly, hopefully, during the day? Yeah. It's, and it's not one of the ones we get to plug in. It's not electric or anything like that. Okay. Cool. So added comfort for the, uh, for the bedroom then. Um, okay. So back outside now. So, yeah, we have our uh, East private deck. So... In California, you can live outside 10 months of the year, so we thought it would be really nice to have an east private deck. We even have a fan in case it gets pretty hot over here. So we have a little east private deck, and we have a big deck on the south side. And this is where we also have our mech room that houses all of our water appliances. We have a north mech room for all our electrical appliances. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, this is a pretty uh, impressive set of mechanics in <laughs> here. So, I mean... Yeah. Uh, do you do you do you understand all of these uh, components here? Is I can, yeah, I could talk a little bit about it. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little about? It? All right, so we we have one heat pump, and that's for both our radiant heating cooling system that I mentioned earlier, and it's also to heat our shower water. So we have our Phoenix heat pump here, and then we have our insulated water uh, tank right over there. So I mentioned all we need is that radiant system. We don't need any forced air, so, but we do have an HRV system to help with ventilation and help with uh, indoor air quality, as well as a integrated humidifier that goes into the HRV system if it gets too dry, like it can in California. Right. So how long have you been working on this project? I've been working on this project for two years, and I've been a student project manager for about a year, year and a half. So two years ago, it was just very preliminary. This is what green building is, and then it kind of slowly morphed into us designing for this house specifically for about a year. Um, how does it feel to finally be here in Denver <laughs> and have your house open to the public, mm -hmm. showing it off, uh, having the judges come through? How does that feel? It feels incredible. Yeah, we uh, just seeing the house come up, we actually only saw the house finished here. A lot of teams finished, you know, where they were and then took it apart and brought it here. And that was what we were planning on doing. But we didn't finish in time, so just seeing all the finishes, especially interior, come up and seeing it all work and seeing our systems turn on was really incredible. Right. And I imagine it's uh, quite, quite the thrill. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, shall we uh, wrap around here? So I see a lot of kind of nice outdoor space. Um, how's the, what's the weather like in D UC Davis uh, these days? It's very nice, actually. Um, so it's pretty much... 70s most of the time and when it does get really hot it's usually for like a week or so in the in the summer where it gets like three digits and then it drops right back down Sorry, we got um, a dance party going on over oh here. boy <laughs> wow dance party uh sighted 
Yeah, definitely. That's what the deck is for. <laughs> so I, I can tell that the, the team is feeling you, you're sharing your joy at uh, being done with construction. Definitely. Construction was very tough. We had apparently an unprecedented amount of rain drop in Colorado while we were doing construction, so it was quite a challenge. <laughs> you made it through the muck, though. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay, so, so tell us about the deck, then. So we have a completely drought-tolerant landscape. So all this landscape you see in our planters here is watered by the gray water from all of our showers. And as you, on the other side of the deck, kind of hard to see over there, but there's an edible arrangement, and that's watered by our rainwater. So we did a lot of research on how Californians use their water, and we found that Californians use at least half of their water outside for their landscaping. So just by our gray water and our rainwater, we cut the water use in half for the household. Right, right. Um, and one thing, so we, you know, often with these houses, you can't actually see the solar panels. I mean, these are solar-powered houses. So tell us a little bit about your solar system. Okay, so we have uh, 27 panels from SunPower, and then we have a Sunnyboy inverter, and we have a SunVerge integration system battery. We can go in the mech room and see them if you want, but the uh, SunVerge battery uh, buys the energy at night when it's really cheap, and then it sells it during the day so that you get the most value for your energy. So that's one way that our house is able to be really cost effective. Terrific. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, what's what's this over here? I see some contraption. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this is uh, by GoSun. It's a, it's a solar cooker. So basically, we have the shades up right now, but when the sun hits it, it gets very, very hot. And if you pull out this cylinder here, you can put in food and cook it. It's this big. So we put in um, potatoes, bread, you know, you can cook thin meat in there, things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, and so these uh, um, shades here, you're saying sometimes yeah. they're back, that they, you can uh, retract them, is that right? Yeah, definitely. So um, we got these from uh, Netherlands, uh, and they do retract. So you can bring them all the way back like that. It's just that easy. It's just on a pulley system. So another way you can be reconfigurable, you can make the south deck however shaded, not shaded you want, yeah. and it helps with solar heat gain. So in Davis, you really only need a lot of shading on your south side. Because uh, we see a lot of decks in Davis with huge decks on the south side, but it's unlivable for a couple months. If you don't, if you just have a shader, it really helps. Right, right, absolutely. Does the Netherlands team know that you're, uh, you know, know borrowing there? I did. I don't know, but I did see that they do have a shade truck that looks very similar to ours. So we might be using great mind. <laughs> yeah, we might be using a similar thing. All right, cool. Okay, um, so where to next? Um, well, our bench here is completely supported by all of our IBC containers. So uh, it's all a very cost-effective solution to having to have so many water tanks. We need to have a couple tanks for the competition because we're not tied into city utilities. So we've integrated it into our bench structure here so that when we come back, we also have a couple more tanks for rainwater because we'll have some extra. So with that, we get, a, we get a huge bench, and it's actually made from the same material of our decking. It's supposed to be kind of like a continuous surface there. So it's just a great place to hang out. Yeah, it looks like it. Clearly, everybody else thinks so too. So, okay. Well, um, do we have more to more to see around the corner here? Yeah. So again, we're the number two bike capital in the world. So this is our bike feature here, and it's just a, basically a little piece of home. So, and it lights up at night, so it's pretty cool. Okay. So who's responsible for this? Uh, actually, it was uh, a combination of our other student project manager, Gio, and Bry and Gina, and a couple of other designers, basically. And we had a, there's a small little bike uh, store, I guess, in Davis that's based on, um, it's like donation based. So people volunteer, people donate, and they teach you how to work with bikes. It's called uh, the Davis Bike Collective, and they gave us all these tires for free. So. Cool. Yeah, it's a nice little touch. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for the tour. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for listening. <clears throat> My name is Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy. We're here at Solar Decathlon 2017, uh, signing off from the UC Davis Our House. Uh, again, we're going to be streaming from all these different houses uh, throughout the Solar Village. Uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day here in Denver. Uh, look forward to bringing you more of these houses over the rest of the weekend. So uh, if you want to vote for your favorite solar house, you can go to the Solar Decathlon Facebook page and vote in the People's Choice Awards. I'm sure Davis would appreciate your vote. Um, but until next time, Matt Dozier signing off from the U.S. Department of Energy.